Sorry, yeah. <laughs> I was looking at 2.7. Sorry. Okay, good morning. Uh, this is the Senate Education Committee. We'll call it as a subcommittee. Um, and we'll start with the uh, first senator, Senator Moning. Would you please come? Welcome to the committee. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair and members. I first want to thank Senator Fuller for graciously letting me switch places with her. She'll be number two. Um, I am here to present SB 242. And uh, before I begin, I begin, I would like to accept the amendments requested by the chair on page three of the analysis. Uh, I'm here today to present SB 242, which will give parents, community members, and our elected school boards a voice in community policing decisions that affect our schools and their surrounding communities. Since 1995, the U.S. Department of Defense has operated the Federal 1033 program, which has provided local law enforcement agencies with over $5.1 billion worth of surplus military weapons and supplies. Over 120 of the local law enforcement agencies nationwide who have received these weapons are police departments based at school districts. Here in California, the San Diego Unified Police Department applied in for and received a $700,000 14-ton mine-resistant and ambush-proof vehicle, also known as an NRAP. The Los Angeles School Police Department also received an NRAP vehicle, along with 61 M16 automatic rifles and three 40-millimeter M79 grenade launchers. While in most cases these items were destined for less than lethal purposes, there was still little to no involvement of parents, faculty, or school board members in the decision to acquire them. SB 242 will require that before a school district police department can receive military surplus through the federal 1033 program, the elected school board must first publicly vote to approve the acquisition, provide parents, faculty, and community members a chance to publicly comment on the proposal, identify safe storage for any of the military items, and ensure that police officers have proper training in the handling of the equipment and weapons received. This measure does not seek to deprive law enforcement of access to these tools. It solely requires transparency and the inclusion of parents and elected school board members in an important school and community policing decision. Madam Chair, I'd now like to turn it over to Shereen Walters with the California State PTA to say a few words in support of the measure. Thank you very much, but let's pause. Let's take the roll. Blue? Here. Blue here, Huff? Here. Huff here, Block? Hancock? Leva? Here. Leva here, Mendoza? Pan? Here. Pan here, Vidac? Here. Vidac here. Thank you, we have a quorum. Please, in support of the bill. Madam Chair and committee chairs, um, our committee members, my name is Shereen Walter and I represent the nearly one million members of the California State PTA in support of this bill. As the largest child advocacy association working exclusively on behalf of children, the PTA believes it is our responsibility to advocate for the safety and welfare of all children. PTA believes it is the responsibility of parents and community members to provide necessary input for effective decision making at the local level. We believe that there should be in continued involvement and cooperation between parents, students, teachers, security staff, classified staff, and law enforcement representatives in designing and revi revising of the school's discipline, disaster, safe school, and crisis plans. We are concerned about the possible effects on school climate that the presence of military equipment on our school sites might have. The reaction of parents and community members in San Diego and Los Angeles ultimately resulted in the returning of the MRAP and the grenade launchers acquired by the school police departments. Do we really need those things on our school campuses? This bill does not prevent school police departments from acquiring the surplus military equipment but ensures an opportunity for community involvement and a parental voice when these decisions are being made and requires greater transparency, transparency in the acquisition of excess military equipment. 
It lets local communities decide whether those types of equipments are appropriate in their school districts or not. And I just wanted to offer a parent perspective on the amendments that were accepted by the author. Um, just the importance of making sure that parents are notified of school board meetings because parents don't just routinely show up at school board meetings. They need to know that there's an important topic being discussed. So I thank you and PTA is in support of this bill. Thank you very much. Others in support? Is there any opposition to the bill? The committee didn't receive any. Any questions from members? Senator Huff. What prohibits a local school board from enacting a policy that anything like this would, they would need to know about? Because some of your comments was sometimes school boards need to know this is happening. A school board could enact that policy. This would not prevent that. Uh, we just think given the cart being before the horse in these earlier examples, it would protect parents, children, and school environments for this to be a required discussion before a school board. It takes us beyond the acquisition of school books, school supplies, things that we consider to be normal business practices for education, and a really fundamental transition into the acquisition of military equipment. That's why we think it's important that school boards not have this as an option, but rather uh, a best practices uh, as, as this bill would establish. Well, I would just submit that the concept of what safety is to schools evolves and it's different in Wairika than it is in LA Unified. Um, and certainly people hold their elected officials accountable and they either implement the, the types of policies that they want and the safety around the kids or they get rid of them. And I personally don't see that we need to weigh in on something it looks like. Um, I, I get that some people feel military equipment just because it's military is some <laughs> level of order of higher and not needed on our campuses. Um, you can make an argument that some of the schools that have been, where hostages have been held, it would have been nice if it had some different equipment there, but that's the decision I think local uh, officials need to make. I don't feel that us having a top-down approach on something like this just because it's military equipment. Uh, schools should know what they need and, and acquire it or not acquire it, and it should be a public discussion. There's no right. question about that. Yeah. Well, I, pre I appreciate the perspective. Again, my bill does not prohibit that acquisition. It just suggests that it should be subject to an elected school board discussion. In some of these cases, the school board's not aware that the police that are working for them are pursuing this equipment. We just think it should be a matter of transparency, public participation, if but the, the electeds make it, the decision. And I would say if the school board doesn't know what their enforcing agency is doing, then the school board is being derelict in their duties. I, I can't right. support your bill today, but right. I appreciate the yeah. concern with which it is drafted. Thank you. Other comments, questions to the um, senator? Do I hear a motion? Move the bill. Thank you. Uh, would you like to close? Yes, uh, just respectfully ask for an I vote. Appreciate the work of, of your committee on this, and we look forward to moving forward with uh, informing this bill. And I do respect your intent of the bill is to for more transparency. I do think that uh, school boards do need to know and the public needs to know um, about what's going on. So I am in support of the bill. So please call the roll. Do pass as amended to public safety. Lou? Aye. Lou, aye. Huff? Huff, no. Block? Hancock? Leva? Aye. Leva, aye. Mendoza? Pan? Aye. Pan I Vidak. Okay, you have three votes. We'll keep the roll open. And that's um, due pass to public safety as amended. Great. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, members. Thank you. Senator Fuller, thank you very much for your patience. <laughs> you have um, item two. No, let's see. No, she doesn't have item two. Item four, SB 138. Good morning, Madam Chair. Good morning. And committee members, thank you for the opportunity to present SB 138 relating to physical education exemption for high school rodeo athletes. SB 138 clarifies that a local school district has the option to exempt high school rodeo athletes from PE classes. 
This built idea was brought to me last year by a group of high school rodeo athletes that you all met on the floor who serve as ambassadors for their sport and who are eager to train themselves to the top of their potential to reach the top of their sport. The sport is a very rigorous sport and as you can imagine, they need every moment to train and to prepare themselves. So last year when I recognized these outstanding young ladies along with a bipartisan group of legislators, uh, I think everyone saw their dedication to the sport and they come from all over California. And there are several of them, others with us, and um, at, at some point they may come up and tell you what part of the state they're from. But these, these dedicated athletes shared with me, and I, as a school superintendent, I had to notice how bright they were, how smart they were, how great a shape they were. And um, I sympathized with them, that they just wanted to be the best they could be, and they wanted to use whatever available space in their schedules they could for trigonometry and other things, because they all are young women and men who plan to go on with scholarships and other things to uh, higher education and a, and a career in, in, most, in many cases, agriculture, but all across the board. Many of them, this will be a sport, and they will have uh, pharmaceutical educations and so on and so forth. The High School Rodeo Association um, is a highly organized um, uh, group, and they require each school's approval for students to train and compete, so they're not alone. Uh, but the biggest problem that occurs at some of these schools is that because the code is unclear, their respective schools fail to recognize rodeo as a sport on the same level as other sports or interscholastic sports. According to Section 51.242 of the Education Code, local school boards may currently elect to exempt a pupil from a PE course if that pupil is engaged in a school sponsored in a interscholastic athletic program. The code defines interscholastic athletic program very vaguely. So in some schools, some schools recognize these programs. Others do not because they are not sure if it's an interscholastic activity. We received a letter of support from the National High School Rodeo Association Executive Director after the deadline, and I believe it's been passed out to you. Mm -hmm and um, you'll have it in your packets, and it was not in the analysis. I have a few, a few guests with me who will speak to the level of uh, athleticism and dedication, and I'm going to start out by, um, well, I'll let each of you introduce yourselves, and then we'll come back and introduce the others. Okay, thank you, please. My name is Leandra Spence, and I have been a teacher for 16 years at Oakdale High School. I'm a resource specialist, department chair, as well as the rodeo club advisor there at Oakdale High School. Oakdale High School has been recognizing rodeo as a sport for the past 20 years successfully. And so I'm here to attest that it can work. Um, it has provi provided great academic benefit to our students that um, are CHSRA members that rodeo, um, along with recognizing it as a sport and the PE, PE exemption. Our students are allowed to earn PE credit in the spring of course, there are guidelines that go along with that. Um, we give spring PE credit so that we can monitor 80% um, successful attendance in the events throughout the year. Um, along with that comes excused absences, just as your football players and baseball players are excused. They are not penalized academically for missing school for their sport. That is huge for our students in the upper level courses. Um, it can lead to other things opening up for our students. For example, it's recognized by our Sports Boosters program. So our students are able to receive funds from our community, just as the other members of baseball, football, softball teams. Um, I just want to, I feel very passionate about this. We happen to live in a community that really supports this Western heritage. And we receive phone calls all the time. I just received one yesterday from a school in Modesto. Uh, where students are working with their athletic directors and their um, administration on how they can get rodeo recognized as we do at Oakdale High School. They just don't know the process of how to go about getting it done. 20 years ago in 1994, when Oakdale was able to put this into their athletic sports handbook, um, it was a great um, adventure between 
parents, community members, and the school board, and they got it done, and it's been successful without incident for the last 20 years. So I just want to kind of lay that foundation out there for you while you listen to the students. Okay, great. Thank you. Please introduce yourself. Yeah. Hello, my name is Wyatt Bankus. Uh, I'm 17 years old. I'm a senior at Oakdale High School. I'm the student state president of the California High School Rodeo Association and a student state president of California High School Rodeo Association District 5. Uh, for many students in the CHSRA, rodeo is not just something to do to pass the time. It is rather a lifestyle and takes countless hours of not only practice, but also patience and time. As being a senior at Oakdale High, I have a full schedule on and off the campus with rodeo. To compete at a high level in rodeo, it takes determination, willpower, and practice, just like any other sport like football and baseball. Uh, benefiting the students with credits uh, with the PE uh, would extremely help when it comes to getting to practices. Uh, rodeo isn't something you can do inside of a gym. It, it takes an arena, horses, cattle. It takes a lot of volunteer work as well to put on rodeos. Uh, high school rodeo, with these credits, uh, students can spend more time in the practice pen, but also it will help the students to become better use of their pens to complete high school and move on to furthering their education. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, hello, my name is Rachel Yasbell. I am Miss California High School Rodeo. I am from Senatorial District 38, Escondido, California. And um, I just wanted to thank you for allowing all of us to come and speak today about the bill in question. Uh, high School Rodeo has been a huge part of my life for seven years now and has made me who I am today. This association promotes the Western way of life, good sportsmanship, and most importantly, education. This year, my school has allowed me, to, because I am nationally ranked, to be one of two students ever to receive PE credit for an outside sport. Um, be, as an AP student and a rodeo contestant, there is only so many hours in the day to practice and to do homework. Because of this outside PE credit, I now have six period free to practice. And at the same time, I have a good portion of the night to still do homework and to still study. As a result, I've had a 4.5 last semester for the first time in my high school career. Because of the extra time, this has allowed me to have, along with practice. And I've also succeeded in the arena lately. Uh, this system has helped me tremendously, both in the arena and in the classroom. Please take into consideration all that we have said today. Thank you, Thank you very much. Others in support of the bill, would you like to come up and identify if you'd all yourself? Like to come or just up. want to stand and... And maybe they could say their names and their just their town where they come from. Yeah, or and of course their title. They're very proud of their their title positions that they hold. Okay, um, do you, guys up here make room for the others. Yeah, come on up. Um, hello, my name is Gracie Patchy. I'm from Senate District 2 in Middletown, California. I'm 16 years old and a junior at Middletown High School, and I am Miss California High School Rodeo District 2, and I support SB 138. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, hello, my name is Corey Burdett, and I am from Senate District number 31, and I'm here to um, um, test, like, Oh, no, it's, right. it's okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Hello, my name is Victoria Cover. I am the high school rodeo student state state secretary. I am from state state senate district number eight, and I support SB one thirty eight. Thank you very much. Hi, my name is Bailey Poole. I am from Senate District 14. I am the California Junior High Division State Secretary, and I support SB one thirty eight. What town? What town? Clovis, California. Thank you. Hi, my name is Lacey Lowry, and I'm from Bakersfield, California, and I'm with Senate District 16, and I support SB 138. Great. Thank you. I'm Ken Paddock. I'm the National Director of California and the High School Rodeo. Um, I'm from uh, Senate District 5, and I support 138. Thank you. Hi, my name is Mike Asbell from Escondido, California, and from Senate District 38, I support SB 138. Okay. Good morning, my name is Tracy Scott. I'm the third vice president of CHSRA and I reside in Agua Dulce, California. That is in the 21st district and I strongly support SB 138. Thank you. 
Okay, any others in support of the bill? Is there any opposition to the bill? You can come, you can You can Thank you. Please. Yes, good morning. Senator Lewis, Senator Huff, members of the Education Committee. My name is Cindy Letter, and I'm from the Fairfield Sassoon Unified School District. I'm very honored to represent the California Association of Health, Physical Education, Recreation, and Dance. I have taught physical education for over 35 years and would like to express the association's extreme opposition to SB 138. And we are also in agreement with your analysis on this bill. California was the first state to mandate minutes at all levels in physical education for the health of their children. However, these minutes are disappearing due to the House and Senate who are constantly creating exemptions and passing bills like this one. My colleagues, not only in California, but across the country, have um, believed that there are misperceptions that physical activity like rodeo, ROTC, marching band, cheerleading, CIF sports, the list goes on, are confused as physical education. These misconceptions continually chip away at mandated minutes, which were designated to improve physical literacy in our students that only physical education can do. Why have mandated minutes if you vote to give students excuses to not be physically educated? The California Department of Education defines physical education as an instructional program. Its model content standards include areas that provide developmentally appropriate standard-based instructions. Its instruction provides students with essential skills and knowledge through a broadly based curriculum that is age appropriate and links learning experiences in a sequential and articulate manner. Only quality physical education courses can provide the eight content standards, which are the effects of physical activity on dynamic health, mechanics of body movement, aquatics, gymnastics and tumbling, individual and dual sports, rhythm and dance, team sports, and combatives. It defines the CDE physical activity as any bodily movement that substantially increases energy expenditures. Recess, intramural sports, athletic programs involve physical activity but each serves as a different purpose from physical education. Extramural sports, excuse me, intramural sports, athletic programs provide opportunities for students learning but are not likely to con constitute highly qualified standard-based physical education instruction. CDE goes on to say that physical activity programs that students participate in outside of school are not the same as physical education programs. Such programs typically provide opportunity for students to develop skills in a single area and not intent to provide instruction in the essential eight content areas and standards of physical education. With all due respect to the physical activity of the Rodeo Association. Rodeo should not take place of a student's experience in the eight required content areas of physical education has to offer. We are very much in support of activities that encourage students to be physically active during and beyond the school day. These activities should be highly encouraged to supplement but never supplant quality physical education courses in our schools because we are about education. The passage of SB 138 will set a precedent for all other single physically active activities to ask for exemption. When it comes to your vote on SB 138, 
you should now fully understand that equestrian activities cannot take the place of quality physical education programs and thus vote no on this bill. Thank you very much. Thank you. Please. Madam Chair, members of the committee, my name is Kula Koenig, Government Relations Director with the American Heart Association, American Stroke Association, here to oppose SB 138. The AJ and ASA science-based position is that physical education should be a part of every regular school day for all children in elementary, middle, and high school. We view physical education as an essential part of the total curriculum. Physical education programs increase the physical competence, health-related fitness, self-responsibility, and enjoyment of physical activity for all students, more importantly, so that they can establish physical activity as a natural part of everyday life. Studies show that students who receive 30 minutes a day of quality physical education learn more effectively and achieve more academically. We are very supportive of students' participation in extracurricular activities and commend the youth who make the commitment to engage in these activities. These programs, such as high school rodeo, are important and include various levels of physical activity, as they've already stated, but though they have distinctly different goals and objectives than physical education. We do not support extracurricular activities taking the place of physical education and all the lifelong health benefits that it affords our young people. For those reasons, we oppose SB 138. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Well, Superintendent, former Superintendent, um, this is a debate between uh, what I would call um, scope of practice or, you know, um, PE versus extracurricular activities, and uh, school districts, according to the Ed Code, and we may disagree with this, do offer the school districts an, op an option to count activities toward uh, physical education. But um, you've heard from the folks who are proponents of, um, uh, of the field that um, outside activities do not equate to a um, a curriculum of physical education. So you you have experience in this area and this is your bill. Thank you. It's actually I did teach PE myself at one time. Actually I came from a very small town, very small agricultural town. Um, my best interest was a horse. That was my highest hobby that I had. I believe that I myself would still be in the small town with no stoplights, enjoying my horse. If it weren't for some people who came forward and did programs that caught my, my dreams, my interest, and my excitement. And the people who, ex who excel are people who they have to have an outlet for everything. It's all for us or nothing. Everybody sitting up here, I think, is that kind of person. You have to be willing, if there's a dream, to give your all, and that's all you want to do, and you are consumed by it, and all your friends think you're crazy, but you can't help yourself. In, in my experience as a PE teacher, among other things, I also taught English, I found that if I could light that spark, then I could let those few go on to who they were supposed to be. Those are people who are supposed to win the Olympics. Now, that's not the mass population. I totally agree about PE. I believe everybody should take PE. I played on all the intramural sports. I actually liked sports a lot better than school because even though I was fairly good at school, sports were fun. But it comes down to this. Schools today are afraid to do anything new or different. They're afraid that they're going to be sued. In this case, this, the only thing we're doing is adding one more thing. There's already marching band has, has been noticed. There, there's already uh, a list of things. We would be adding this to the list. Now, why did I come forward? After being a school superintendent for, actually, I was an educator for 32 years, and I was a school superintendent for 17. <laughs> I was the kind of superintendent who every program that someone brought forward, I tried to figure out how to do it. If there was one child who would respond to that program, then I figured out a way to do it. If there was one transfer, I openly gave it because I believed that People can't just find the school that has the capacity for their dreams. 
they have to find the place to nurture their dreams that gives them the most chance to win. When I met these bright students, actually I met them in Bishop, the other part of my district that's redistricted out now, I think you saw in their eyes today what I saw, and, and they asked me to bring this forward. They feel when they compete that some of them have this great advantage and others of their own competitors do not. And the fact that they were willing to say, okay, I know this gives me an edge and I can win, but I want my sister or my brother here from another town to have the same advantage. At that point, I said, okay, I got a lot of other things to do, but I'm going to bring this forward. So I, I ask you today to, to look in their eyes and see if we adults should limit them in any way or if we should give it very clear the option and then let the school district decide. The, the teachers all have teachers associations. I belong to the teachers union in my day. They all have teachers associations that work with the superintendent and the board and they can all weigh in at the local level whether they want this option to be not. Just help me make it clear. That's all I'm asking. Help me make it clear that there is a path if they want to take it. There is nothing in this bill that requires it. There is nothing in this bill that says bad things about PE. And by the way, by the time you get to the space where you're able to compete in this, you've had PE since kindergarten of one type or another. And most of the time, you're only going to have like one semester, spring semester generally, that you are exempted. You don't just join rodeo and then you never go to PE again. And frankly, most of these kids, if they weren't going to the rodeo program, they would have to be in PE because they couldn't stand to sit in school all day long without being in PE. They're very physical kids. So thank you, ladies. I appreciate you. I appreciate you very much. I appreciate what you do. Teaching is very hard in this day and age. And I appreciate you standing up for, for the principals. But in this case, I have to agree with the kids that they're the tomorrow's future and this is what they think they need. And they're they're the ones that should know. Okay. I uh, asked for an I vote, and I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to get so carried away, but that's the okay. superintendent me and the teacher comes out sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> All of us. Um, questions from members? 